I'm Dr. Frida. Endemic versus pandemic. Which one is what and when and how are you supposed to know the difference? If you are someone who is wondering the difference between an endemic and a pandemic and how it actually affects your life, then you have come to the right place. Because today I am breaking down the difference between an endemic and a pandemic and what it means to you. Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida. I'm an MD who has been triple board certified in nephrology, internal medicine, and pediatrics. And today I'm going to break down the difference between an endemic and a pandemic. First, I'll talk about the definition. What is the definition of an endemic versus the definition of a pandemic? Then I'll talk about eradication or getting rid of a disease altogether. And is that possible in the case of COVID-19? And then I'll answer the question, are we there yet? Have we moved from being in a pandemic to now being in an endemic when it comes to COVID-19? Lastly, I'll discuss what this all means to you. If and when we are in an endemic with COVID-19, does that mean life can totally go back to normal? Can we get back to normal? All right, let's get started. So first, the definitions. A pandemic, and you will recall that the World Health Organization declared that COVID-19 was a pandemic in March of 2020. So what does that mean? For a pandemic, you have to have an outbreak of an illness or an epidemic worldwide, all over the world, or in a very large geographic location, crossing international borders, and you just have really high cases. And with a the pandemic, these high cases are often unpredictable and they disrupt society. That's what a pandemic is. We had a pandemic with the Spanish flu in 1918. We had a pandemic with H1N1 in 2009. And of course, as of March, 2020, it was declared that we had a pandemic with COVID-19. So what does it mean to be endemic? Well, to be endemic, the disease is not totally gone. It's not eradicated, but it's more in the background. It's in a steady state, it's static, and it's predictable. That's what's key, it's predictable. In an endemic, Scientists are able to predict the number of cases that a disease is likely to cause. They're able to predict the community which will be affected, and they're able to predict the time of year or the season when a disease will rear its ugly head. This is an endemic. We have endemics such as the flu. We know when flu season is. We know how many vaccines to order for flu season. We can present how many hospitalizations we will have in a flu season from year to year. Chickenpox is endemic. Uh, pneumonia is endemic. Is COVID-19 endemic? Okay, we'll keep discussing it, but this is what an endemic is. And then you have cases where certain illnesses have been eradicated. And really, the one disease we have been successful in eradicating is smallpox. The last case of naturally occurring smallpox was in 1977. Smallpox was completely eradicated. And prior to being eradicated, it killed something like a half a billion people in the 20th century, but it was completely eradicated thanks to vaccines. Be sure to watch my YouTube video on the truth about vaccines after you finish watching this video. For COVID-19, will we be able to completely eradicate it? Well, I'm a pretty optimistic person. I look at life as, you know, with rose colored goggles and with the glass being half full, but quite honestly, we will not be able to eradicate COVID-19. It is very, very, very unlikely. And this is why, one of the reasons why. COVID-19 can be found in animals as well, okay? It has animal reservoirs. When you have diseases that have animal reservoirs, it's very difficult to eradicate them, especially when the animals are able to pass the diseases to humans. And we know that COVID-19 has been found in hamsters, it's been found in deer, and so not likely to be eradicated for that reason, among others. But can we go into being an endemic? Can COVID-19 be an endemic and are we there yet? So that's really the big question. Are we there yet? When you look at cases and you compare them from the very beginning of the pandemic in 2020, and then you fast forward to two years later, March of 2022, indeed, cases have gone down very significantly. So have hospitalizations. But just because they have improved, does that mean that it's time to relax? Are we in an endemic phase? Well, if you take a look at February, 2022, two years into the COVID-19 pandemic, we lost 60,000 people from COVID-19. 
that's a lot of deaths. And if you compare it to even a bad flu season, we lost more people in one month than we've lost in an entire year with the flu. Quite significant. And even when you start looking into 2022, two years after the pandemic of COVID-19, at the daily deaths. Yes, the deaths have gone down quite significantly. In fact, during the first week of March 2022, we were down to just about 1,200 deaths a day in the United States. But just think about that number in terms of people who have lost their lives. That's still a lot of people. And so when I gave the definition of endemic, we talked about not disrupting life, right? We talked about in order to be endemic, a disease has to be at a steady state. It has to be, you know, right there, kind of at a place where it's predictable. And quite honestly, with numbers like that, 60,000 people dying in one month, 1,200 people, 1,300 people dying in a day, that is still at a point where it is disruptive to everyday life. So is that an endemic? The other thing to consider with COVID-19 is the predictability. And as long as we have variants, which we know we do with COVID-19, it's not so predictable. So we have the Delta variant, and once the Delta variant started to decrease and be less prevalent, a lot of people celebrated, started taking off masks and started opening the world back up. And then what happened? We got the Omicron variant, which was even more transmissible than the Delta variant. Well, Fast forward to March of 2022, when the Omicron variant has decreased significantly. Now you have people saying, okay, well now, are we there yet? Are we in an endemic? Well, guess what? There are still variants. There is a variant of the original Omicron, BA1, and the variant is called BA2. With the BA2 variant, as of the second week in March, it accounted for 11.6% of the cases in the United States, which was up from the previous week of 6.6% of the cases. Does that sound familiar? Yes, a new variant that already was starting to move pretty quickly. And guess what else? We thought that the Omicron variant was the most transmissible thing we had ever seen. Well, as of the first week, March, 2022, scientists are calculating that the BA2 variant is actually 30% more transmissible than Omicron variant. And of course, these numbers can change. Science is dynamic, but the point is, just because numbers are down, it doesn't mean that COVID-19 is no longer an issue. It's definitely not static and it's definitely not predictable at this point. Here's the other thing. In the United States, we have to step outside of ourselves and look at other countries. So look at the UK, right? And the UK often has illnesses before we get them here. They'll have their epidemic and then we'll follow. You know, we've seen that with other variants, uh, including the Omicron variant. The UK cases have been steadily decreasing after they peaked with Omicron and then they hit their decline. But as of the first week in March, 2022, that BA2 variant, that new variant since the original Omicron variant is actually the dominant variant in many countries. The point is, even though cases overall have decreased and there are somewhat less deaths for sure, COVID-19 is not static, it's not predictable, and we still have these variants we have to be on the lookout for. The numbers, of course, are all relative. And when I look at people getting excited just because we have a lot less deaths than we had with COVID-19 at the beginning of the pandemic, and of course we have you know less cases, less hospitalizations, that's definitely something to celebrate, but it's all relative. We're celebrating, but it's not over. It's as if you had a student who used to be an A student, and then they had some type of a, a psychological trauma, and they went from being a straight A student to a straight F student, and now you've been working with them, and now they're up to being a D student. And okay, yes, you can celebrate the Ds or even the Cs, but you're not done yet. You still need to do whatever interventions to try to get them back to being an A student. Or for me, when I'm counseling my patients, if I have someone who I have on a weight loss program, they may be they may go from being you know, 100 pounds overweight to being 75 pounds overweight. And yes, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate. That's great. But I'm not finished. We still have to have the same interventions of healthy habits. And that's how I'm looking at COVID-19. Yes, you know, we were in a pandemic. We know all the deaths that we've had and all the hospitalizations that just hor horrific, absolutely horrific. And so even though two years out from the pandemic, it may be better than it was, we're not there yet. 
So do I think that at some point we will be in an endemic phase for COVID-19? I do. I really do. No, I don't think we'll eradicate it, but I do think we'll get into an endemic phase. But once we are, does that mean life can totally go back to normal? Does that mean that we can burn our masks and, and not worry about vaccines? No, the answer is no. Because even once we get to a point where COVID-19 is in the background, when it's static, when it's a little more predictable, we still have people who are vulnerable in our population. We have the very young, we have the very old, we have people who are immunocompromised, transplant patients, chemotherapy patients. We have patients who are not vaccinated. Yes, we have to worry about them too because the unvaccinated people are still the ones who are dying mostly from COVID-19. So even when we reach an endemic phase, we still have to be careful. And if you're a vulnerable person, you will still have to be careful in the endemic phase. Let's remember, there are certain diseases that are endemic. Malaria is a disease that's endemic. And in 2020, malaria killed over 600,000 people, okay? Other diseases like tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is endemic, but it still kills millions of people. And smallpox, before it was eradicated, was still killing millions of people, even when it was considered to be static and predictable. The point is, just because a disease is endemic does not mean that you don't have to worry about it. You still have to be careful and you have to watch and you have to do some sequencing. There has to be testing. You know, with COVID-19, maybe in the future, instead of having to wear masks everywhere, you might have to always have some masks on deck or for times when cases do increase or when you're around vulnerable populations. That may be indefinite, we don't know. Same thing with testing. We do need to continue to test and so that we find out about COVID-19 outbreaks or peaks before it's too late. And so it may be a case, you may have to always keep a few of those rapid COVID tests at home. The point is, it is not likely that we will go all the way back to normal and we're definitely not there yet. And we will always have to remember our lessons. We'll always have to remember the testing, the masks, and to follow the science. Again, remember, the one disease we have been successful at eradicating, smallpox, was eradicated due to vaccines. And there are other diseases which have declined due to mitigation factors. Measles, for example. The only reason we had a measles outbreak somewhat recently was because there are populations that were unvaccinated. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, please be sure to like it and to share it with the people you care about. Also, if you have not done so already, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll be among the first to know when I release new medical content. And definitely, definitely follow me on Instagram at Dr. Frida. That's F-R-I-T as in take care of yourself, A. And that's where I put out information of when I have television appearances, other media appearances, and I give you various updates on Instagram. Also, a lot of these topics, endemic versus pandemic and everything else can be very, very stressful and stress can affect you negatively. So make sure you watch my YouTube video on ways that stress can affect your physical health. I appreciate you for watching. I thank you for watching and I want you to do your best to live your happiest, healthiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.